Welcome back to the show. Today on Tech Driven, this is our weekly news show we do every Sunday. Uh, it gets posted around 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're going to be talking about some of the hot news that happened this week in the hardware tech world. So one of the biggest things that happened this week was RDNA 2 launch. We finally got to see the covers unveiled. Now, I have a couple of items I'm going to sprinkle into this show later on in the end. But if you want to check out the full, our full coverage and my full opinions about it and what I think about it versus uh, the RTX 38, like 3000 series cards, so 3080, 3090, and 3070, go check out the video I posted out on Wednesday. I'll link it down below. And as well, at the end of this video, it's linked there. So when you're done watching this video, go head over to that video. So Microsoft, as we all love and hate Microsoft every single day, and it's kind of unfortunately sometimes the products that they have are the only option. Windows used to be Internet Explorer, and that's kind of where we get to today. Internet Explorer has been around forever. I still, I think I still have an original Windows 95 disk that actually says Windows 95 with Internet Explorer on it, um, <laughs> which is kind of crazy to think. It was a big deal that Windows came with a pre-built-in browser. You know, over the years, other browsers climbed and falled, but IE has always been that one that's always just kind of lingered and been around and always had good compatibility with a lot of things, but it's always gotten flack for, uh, you know, lack of security. You know, it's not the fastest browser. Uh, you know, not this most feature rich. So, you know, Firefox, Chrome, Netscape, or, you know, you have Safari. And there's a bunch of others, but these are just some of the ones I can think that comes to mind. Well, Microsoft, you know, recently came out with Edge, and then they switched over to a Chromium-based, so now it's the newest version of Edge, and Microsoft really wants people to move away from IE. Um, and I don't blame them. They, it, <laughs> IE's really old, and, and, you know, Edge actually now is a pretty decent browser. You can, there's a lot more you can do with it, because it's basically, it's Chrome-based. Um... So what, what are they, how are they doing that? Well, soon you're going to start seeing when you drop on some popular sites, there's over 1,100 uh, and some odd sites uh, when you jump on. So popular sites like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, any popular news site, GoDaddy, things like that. I actually have a whole list linked below in the show notes um, of every website that will be um, forcing you to... Uh, with a pop-up message saying, hey, this website no longer supports Internet Explorer. You better go use Edge. Or if you're on Chrome, you'll never see that. But if you are one of those people who are still using Internet Explorer, uh, you will get this message. Now, the only issue I have with Microsoft killing off IE, and then again, they're not killing it, but they're really trying to get users to stop using their application. So like even when you install Windows, IE, you have to like search it to get it. There's no shortcut to it, and the default browser is Edge now in Windows 10, but there's certain things when it comes to being like a sysadmin as myself, there's so many times where there's, uh, you know, old management for servers, for switches, uh, even different versions of, uh, of, you know, appliances work better in IE. Uh, Dell is notorious for that. HP, Lenovo, like just, they just don't update their management apps and they just sometimes work best on IE. And that's the only time personally I use it, <laughs> which is kind of sad, um, but it's the only thing that works. And so, and you can really turn a lot of features off or uh, re-enable some old features that are not supported by modern browsers where, i.e., you can, and then you can access some of these older apps. You know, if you have really version, old versions of ESX and stuff like that, or really old versions of, you know, some Dell Sans and you need to have a very old specific version of like ActiveX or Silverlight or, or something. I've seen this uh, and that's just coming from a consulting background. Um, so on, in a way, I, I want to see IE dead. Um, but in another way, I, I don't because if you have to support old hardware, it's going to be a pain in the ass. And you're going to have to have maybe a Windows 7 computer on the side um, to manage them. It's not a big deal. You just Make sure you have a older, either Server 2008 VM ready to go and you need to manage something like that, or a Windows 7 laptop um, that you can plug into your network and manage some of these older devices. That's the only thing I can see as, again, some of these old devices are end of life, not supported. So you should be moving off, but there's so many companies out there that 
stick with old hardware. <laughs> um, but if IE does go the way, um, no one will be sad. So let's talk to Intel for about a minute. I know they haven't been on the hottest topic, and I know this year probably hasn't been the best year for them, as the Intel 10th gen, gen CPUs was a lukewarm launch, even though they still bested, you know, best gaming performance, uh, best IPC, and, you know, highest clock speeds. And when it came to, you know, overall, if you're benchmarking and you want the absolute fastest gaming PC, you'd still go 10 900K. Um, but, you know, the most users still went AMD Zen 2. I myself did as well. I was going to go 9900K. But I got a wicked deal on a Zen 2 chip. Wicked deal on a board. Well, okay, price... Yeah, I lean toward price um, over 9900K, and I don't regret my decision. But with Intel now coming out with Rocket Lake S in quarter one, 2021, what does this mean? Well, there's going to be some big changes. Well, not massive changes. Let's put it that way. Um, some of the big changes will be higher IPC, double digit IPC improvements, they're saying new overclocking features, better tuning, and some new features, they said. And that's really all they said. But hey, more overclocking features, nice. Um, an improved in integrated graphics card, which is always nice for pre-builds and, um, you know, more lower-end computers. You know, for people with uh, dedicated um, graphics cards, you don't really care or ever use it. But having an integrated video card also helps for troubleshooting, which... On the downside of AMD systems is there is no integrated graphics unless you get one of the APU systems. Um, but yeah, Intel now with their graphics division that's really ramping up, it'll be nice to see if what the improvement is on that. This will be the first chip Intel will have featuring PCI Express 4.0, which is a big deal um, as AMD has supported that for an entire generation, coming on to the second generation supporting that. And they're saying upwards to about 20 lanes. So it's, it's a lot of uh, PCI Express 4.0, but that's really gonna vary on the board you buy. So if you buy a basic board, you're probably gonna have no overclocking features, very limited PCI Express 4.0 support. Um, but then when you get one of the Z boards, that's a totally different story. As well as there's gonna be some new chipsets um, and all they're saying is it's gonna be a 500 series chipset boards and they're gonna have native USB 3.2 support. So that's pretty good start. All they're saying is uh, it's coming out Q1 2021 and there's nothing really else um, to say. You know, all I can say is if you are in the market for a new PC and you can hold out to, you know, early next year, you know, I would keep my eye out on it. But if you are really eager and want something now, I think Zen 3 is right now is the way to go. The Brown Fan guys, Noctua. You can tell it's their products from a mile away as soon as you see this color. No one else has done it. No one else has copied it. Um which is a good thing and a bad thing. There's a lot of people that, that love the signature color and there's a lot of people that hate it. I personally don't mind it. I've rocked and actually in this exact case, this is our science PC. Um, and I will introduce you guys fully into it a little bit later, but you have seen it on the channel when the channel was TechSource. Um, but this week, Noctua has announced two new coolers adding to their Chromax lineup. So what is that? So what new coolers do they have? Well, there's the NHD 15S, um, which is a little bit different from the NHD 14, which we have here. So this is a you know a fairly old cooler, but the NHD 14 is a freaking killer, kick-ass cooler. Now, some of the things they changed was the uh, fan arrangements a little bit different for better RAM compatibility, which is great because in this case, um, with this motherboard setup and this fan setup, RAM compa compatibility isn't the greatest suit for this. Now, that's why they kind of went with um, a single 140mm uh, fan and a 120mm fan. And even with the 120mm fan, I had to raise it up a tad so it would clear the G-Skill memory in the system. And it does have a little bit of a raised heat spreader, but generally with large tower coolers like this, you're going to use a low-profile memory um, like some of the Corsair Vengeance ones that have the very slim heat sinks, no RGB, no extra stuff. And that's kind of normal with guys or, you know, people that would run a cooler like this. They're not looking for a flashy system. They're looking for a very functional and quiet system where Noctua really provides you that. So that's, um, but the D14 uh, will give you up to 65 millimeters of RAM clearance. So that's not bad. 
Um, but then they're coming out with another one, which is the U9S. So again, a very powerful tower cooler, but it features a single 92 millimeter fan. So that's a little bit smaller than this. This is a 120 millimeter fan, 92 is a little bit smaller. So that will give you more compatibility in smaller, slimmer cases. So if you have a smaller ITX build, maybe not the smallest ones where you're gonna probably wanna use a lay flat cooler versus a tower cooler, but there is some ITX builds that will support tower coolers. Um, as well as some ITX, um, not IT, I was talking about ITX, MATX builds that will have better compatibility for tower coolers as MATX is a little bit bigger. So that'll be fairly cool. I would love to see Noctua, and this is something I've messaged them on Instagram a gazillion times or on Facebook, any post I see of the A12 fans. I love the NFF 12 fans. I have a whole bunch of them. I've never had a failure. They're great fans, um, but I want their next generation, the A12. But unfortunately, I've never got a chance to get them in stock. Or when they are, I'm not in the I'm not in a position that I can af really shell out the cash for three of them. And the reason why I say that is in a future video, um, I just ordered a bunch of the parts that I need is we're gonna be reworking the water loop in this and replacing the General Typhoons in the top radiator in my build. And that will give you guys a chance to actually see my build in detail as I rework the loop and swap out the top fans. So at this point in time, unless the A12s come in stock, I'll be rocking three of these in the top. I have three of these on the back radiator as well. So really awesome fans but I would love to see more Chromax stuff. I know you can get these in Chromax, but I already have two of them. I only need to buy one to, you know, for my three. Um, so I'm not gonna buy the Chromax, I'm gonna rock the brown. So it looks like I can't go anywhere without looking or talking about AMD, it's insane. But this week on the 27th, it looks like a Passmark um, screenshot came out of the 5950X at the top of the leaderboard for single threaded performance, boasting a 3,693 points. That is a 16% over a 10900K at 3,177 points. But what's also what's in between those two chips? A Ryzen 5, a Ryzen 5 5600X at 3,455 points. That's a big deal. Ryzen 5 is only $300. And that's slotting in between these two giants and chips that are not cheap at all. You know, the 10900K is a $550 MSRP chip, US, and the 5950X is supposed to be around $800. So being a baby thread ripper, they're not cheap chips. But with the 59, with the 5600X being 300 bucks and slotting that high in the chart with amazing IPC, that's gonna be the new budget king. So this week, we've talked a lot about RX 6000 series. And if you wanna check out my full breakdown about it, I have a link in the description below. And just after this new story in the outro, there will be a link as well on the video end card. But let's talk about some of the partner cards. Uh, before I get into the partner cards, uh, EKWB uh, is gonna be coming out with their own custom water blocks. So expect to see some acetal blocks, um, acrylic and acrylic with a bunch of RGB, um, which would be great, so hopefully, and around a little bit around launch, we should have some water blocks for people who are buying 6800s and 6900 XTs, and and hopefully as well as the 6800s um, uh, as well. So that's great. So if you, if you're in if if you're into water cooling as like myself, you're going to be able to water cool them. Um, but if you um, aren't as adventurous as getting into open loops, well, Asus will cover you for that. You can still have a water cooled version of the 6800 XT um, video cards. So they're gonna have uh, one with a blower style cooler on it that's gonna help cool the board components, but then connected to a 240 millimeter radiator. So that's fairly large. You're gonna need a, a decent case to put it in. I would probably mount it up front. And then if you have a uh, CPU uh, water block, then mount that maybe in the top of your case. Now just make sure you orientate the, uh, the rad in the, in, in the correct position so you don't run the pump dry. Um, as well as ACES is going to have their Strix tough uh, versions as well, and they look exactly the same as the NVIDIA counterparts, uh, which is fine uh, by for me because I actually like the looks of them. They don't look too crazy. The RGB isn't too in your face. So, and, and the tough I think is the most subtle one as well. MSI is going to have their Gaming X Trio, which is a pretty decent looking card as well, and they showed that off in their stream. Gigabyte and Sapphire, Sapphire. Um, if you're not too familiar, is a uh, very well-known 
uh, AMD uh, partner and they make a ton of AMD cards. And I know ASRock recently has been making AMD cards, but they haven't shown off anything just yet. But Gigabyte and Sapphire showed off just reference cards saying, hey, we're making them and here they are and here's our packaging. Yay. <laughs> Nothing exciting there. Um, Power Color showed off the Red Devil in a very uh, teasery way, just showing someone sketching it on paper like, ooh, I'm drawing it. Look at us. We have a Red Devil on the way. It would have been cool if they should maybe just like a glimpse of a rendering of the card like they did with the Liquid Devil for the 5700 XT. And Liquid Devil was an awesome card. So I'm hoping they're going to work with EK and doing another Liquid Devil uh, again for the 6900 and 6800 XT. And, you know, uh, hopefully the numbers are there uh, for sales for them to uh, do that again. Because if that is actually is a possibility and I can get a card with a water block pre-mounted, generally you're saving it a bit of money and you're getting a better binned chip with you know, uh, higher quality memory um, and higher quality uh, GPU that's been verified that it can really push higher clocks. So I don't know. We'll see how this goes in time. And um, it's a good start. It's a strong start from AMD. And it's good to show, it's good to see that the partners are putting money into the cards and building out these stout coolers for the AMD cards. Thanks everyone for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please consider subscribing thumbs upping the video and hitting the bell button for all future notifications. So, um, I, so far it's been really good, uh, you know, positive feedbacks from everyone. Uh, thumbs up rating like to dislike ratio has been awesome. And I thank you to everyone that's, um, stuck around and everyone that has stayed subscribed. Um, some future content to be expecting is a review on this chair. I use it every day. I, I don't know if I mentioned it in a previous video. I may have cut it. Um, as well as there's a course here too. Uh, 220T. I have two of them, a black and a white one. Uh, the black one has not been built or it's still in brand new in box. As well as um, there's going to be some, um, I'm going to be going, uh, so, you know, I had a few of you ask about my own PC and I will be going into detail in that in a very soon video. Um, the water cooling loop is in dire need of some maintenance. I have two fans are actually on their way out making some noise. So when I film, I actually turn the top rad off. Um, and it only turns on if the CPU reaches a certain temperature. And the uh, other three fans are set really low, um, just so you guys don't hear it in the video. Um, but the Gentle Typhoons are fairly old. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I tried buying some new Gentle Typhoons, which are the all black ones. Uh, and the motors in them aren't the same as the originals and they're very loud. And it was a huge disappointment because the A12s, I wanted the black versions, but Noctua doesn't have them yet. And um, so I was like, okay, Gentle Typhoons is the next closest thing. Um, from what I read on reviews, they should have performed just as well, but the motors are insanely loud on these new Gentle Typhoons, which was really disappointing. And I have like three of them sitting in a box and they're useless to me now because I will not use them. So I'll probably only use them in this, re in this PC as a science PC when we attempt to break five gigahertz on the 37.7K. Um, and the, I've got it to boot at five gigahertz on water, but not do a full time spy run. So our goal is to do a full time spy run at five gigahertz in the winter in the garage where the temperatures are going to be fairly low. And that should be lower than what my old apartment was that always stuck around 21 C and same with this room, this room's around 21 C. Um, but I want to see how far we can push it with lower ambient temperatures. So we really, that was going to be a fun project. Um, I know it's not going to be like crazy high. Uh, clocks is a fairly old, but this will be a fun project to show what you can do with some of your older hardware. Um, and because it's old hardware, it does not use anymore. If I do blow it up, it doesn't, I won't be too upset. <laughs> I will be a little bit because I don't like breaking things, but anyways, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So anyways, thank you for watching. Um, and again, if you did enjoy, please consider subscribing. Anyways, have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.